Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a overview of the MSI Z590 Godlike. Not really the kind of video I normally do. I honestly, I'd consider this kind of filler content. But the the thing is, is uh, I want to I wanted to do a video looking at the board with all of the heatsink still attached because, well, let's put it this way. That is the promotional image for the Z590 Godlike, and in my opinion, that looks absolutely bloody horrendous. Now, what's currently sitting on my desk in front of me um, is still what I would consider a visual, dis like, it's a mess. And that seems to just be the aesthetic that MSI goes for with the Godlike series, where, you know, just cram visual elements on it until they run out of ideas or something. Um... So I've never really liked the aesthetic of these boards, but at least this doesn't look anywhere near as bad as all the promotional pictures I've seen, like, say, this one, right? Like, seriously. Um, so yeah, board looks a lot better in person, and so I wanted to do a video with the board on camera because the promotional material just looks horrendous for it, and I don't know why MSI, you know... Unless there's though the thing is I think this board's technically an engineering sample. It didn't come in retail packaging. It came with all the accessories though, um, and so I'm kind of wondering like if maybe I don't have the final coloring of the heat sinks here, in which case, uh, man, I'm very sorry for whoever buys this board if they get it. If it looks the way it looks in promotional images, I'm very sorry for whoever ends up buying one of these retail, because um, yeah, this this looks like this this looks way better than the, the, the photos of this board from MSI that I've seen. So, yeah, basically we have this sort of mirror effect, like mirror finish on a bunch of the surfaces on here, and it looks kind of okay. The main thing is it's really dark gray instead of like that really pale gray. Um, and, uh, yeah, but, so yeah, it doesn't look quite as bad as it looks in the promotional pictures. It's definitely, I'd say, one of the best looking godlikes, simply because, well, a lot of the past ones have just looked horrendous. Um, Anyway, my favorite feature for this board is this thing. So that, if I remember correctly, is called the tuning controller. And basically, MSI took all of the buttons that they normally try to cram along the bottom edge of the board, or, well, actually, they normally cram them on the bottom edge of the board, which is <laughs> I'm not a fan of. So I guess they came up with a solution to that problem, build this little, this controller thing, um, and yeah, so you get power, reset, BCLK down, BCLK up, you get OC retry, OC failsafe, and clear CMOS. So OC failsafe is uh, MSI's version of safe boot. Basically, as the board is powering up, you just hold down failsafe, and it'll um, it'll uh, boot with stock settings instead of your, you know, not working memory overclock. That's my main use for that, uh, for that function. Then OC retry just allows you to tell the board to... to try again. Um, this can be helpful for training really aggressive memory settings, um, where sometimes you'll get 50, like you'll get like a 55 code. And you know, if you just try enough times, eventually the 55 code goes away. Um, there's also a clear CMOS button. And uh, there's a postcode readout. And the postcode readout on this thing is insanely ridiculously bright. Right? Like, I well, on camera, it's hard to tell. But I in person, I don't want to look at that. <laughs> Like, looking directly at that, you, you can't, well, you can read it, but it, like, it's way too damn bright. Um, so hopefully they fix that on the retail version. Um, though I think at this point it's a little bit too late for them to fix it. Because, uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting tape over mine. Because this, this is way too bright. This is, like, yeah, it's just too damn bright. Anyway, here's the board actually lit up, right? So... Um, in typical godlike fashion, well, actually, I think the RGB, so, again, you know, the, the, this top section of the board, really good, and whoever did, did, I assume, actually, it was all done by the same person, but, so, great, this looks good, and here they ran out of ideas. I really don't like this cut triangle, because this right here is exactly, like, I like color, okay? I like colors, I generally don't like RGB, because most RGB implementations, and this is not the worst, but a lot of RGB implementations are extremely uh, lazy, is the best way I, I would describe it. Um, and basically you end up with washed out colors and just like diffusers that aren't very even, you know. And then of course if you go far back enough in time, you'd have motherboards without diffusers, where you just have random RGB LEDs scattered around the board. So it looked like your motherboard had rainbow chicken pox. Now, luckily this motherboard doesn't do that. And this looks really cool. 
But that right there is the kind of thing that I would honestly cover up in electrical tape so that I don't have to look at it because, well, it just looks worse. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't... It, it's just, why? Um, it doesn't do anything visually. And the worst part is, it's like the color diffusion on this is actually really washed out. Because, again, it's just... The LEDs, there's either... Like, I, I can't, th this one's hard to judge. Like, I can't tell if it's they don't have enough LEDs or if the diffuser's too opaque, but, um, yeah, this is not great. Anyway, so, that's the visual side of things. Um, so, I, I'm kind of surprised that I, I'm, I'm not saying that this, this looks like just a mess. <laughs> Some of the past godlikes looked absolutely horrendous, in my opinion, but this one's really not too bad, ignoring what they did to the chipset heatsink. Um, I honestly don't know why they didn't replicate the, the effect that they have up here with the dragon over to the chipset, because there should be enough space for that. Like, the Z590 chipset isn't like X570, it doesn't produce a whole bunch of heat, and they don't really need, like, a fan over it or anything, so, yeah. I, I think it would have been cool if they had, like, a MSI logo or an MEG logo or whatever, but in this style, rather than this random triangle. Because... Really, it's pretty bloody random that there's just a triangle there. Um, anyway, let's move on to the rear I.O. Um, so here's the rear I.O. Um, and really solid. It's no, not necessarily, like, depending on what you're looking for, but uh, you do get dual Thunderbolt, uh, dual Thunderbolt 3 with two display inputs, which is pretty neat. So you can uh, hook up uh, two displays with, with the Thunderbolt on this. Because there are some boards where you'll get two Thunderbolt ports, but you'll only get, like, one display input. So, yeah, I'm not, not sure how, how that's supposed to work. Um, or, well, I guess the idea is you get one Thunderbolt port that can actually drive a monitor, and then the other one is just for, like, peripherals. But here you could have both Thunderbolt ports uh, used for monitors because you have two display inputs for them. Uh, there's also Wi-Fi 6. You've got 10 gig LAN, 2.5 gig LAN, um, decent number of USB ports, clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, so you can update the BIOS of the motherboard without, um, w well, without even having a CPU installed in, for MSI boards. So that's the rear, eyes, rear IO section. Uh, for the VRM heatsink, um, it's massive, um, and it's got a ton of surface area. Like, honestly, you could probably cool a low-end GPU with this. So, yeah, we've got this really, like, fine, dense fin stack up here, and then we have a more passive heatsink style for the, uh, well, I.O. section. But this thing is massive and ridiculously heavy. Like, oh, wait, I forgot to turn the lights back on, so you guys can't see anything. So, yeah. You know, so so that's the so this is like a more passive heatsink because the thing is, if you have really high density and then you don't have any for like active airflow, uh, the air just gets trapped in the fin stack and doesn't go anywhere. So having a more open, like less dense, more open fin stack like this is actually uh, better for zero airflow environments. There's also a pair of fans hiding under the I/O cover, which uh, I don't like VRM fans, especially on boards like this. Like if you had VRM fans on your two hundred like a hundred dollar motherboard where the VRM legitimately just kind of sucks and it's like okay fair enough you you can you can justify having a vrm fan when your motherboard is well this <laughs> the vrm fans are completely bloody unnecessary to be completely honest even the vrm heat sinks are completely unnecessary um high-end z490 motherboards you could literally run over 300 watts of power into the cpu take off the vrm heat sink and in a zero airflow environment they still wouldn't overheat um, and the VRM on this is even bigger than what you'd get on a lot of the Z490 board, on, like, a top-of-the-line Z490 board. And so, this heatsink is already really excessive in terms of, like, what it has, like, the, the VRM doesn't produce enough heat to justify a heatsink this big. Um, and then they've also shoved fans into it, which is just, like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> so... Yeah, anyway, here's here's another look at the, the fin stack over here. There is a heat pipe. I think it's 10 millimeters, but it might, like, it's it looks like there's an 8 or 10 millimeter heat pipe in there. Um, but yeah, honestly, the heat sink on a motherboard like this is just completely irrelevant. And, and I, I'm serious about that. Like, I'm, I, well, I'm not sure that I'm going to bother taking this thing apart, because this thing's going to be a pain to take apart. Um, but yeah, on, on boards like this, like, the, the VRM heat sinks just... Like, th this is a good VRM heatsink design, 
Don't get me wrong. As far as heat sinks goes, that this is a you know this is a proper heat sink. The the thing is, is just like there's no heat. <laughs> there's there's no heat for it to sink because of the VRM that it's sitting on top of. So um, and, and you know we'll cover the VRM in more detail in the PCB breakdown. So yeah, that's kind of that. But this way I don't have to talk about the heat sink. Um, because uh, yeah. So that's kind of that for for the board. Um, there's a back plate on the board, though I don't really like it very much. Um, and it's not because, so, I kind of, and also I just want to tighten this down, because this is, wait, is that actually, yeah, so that one didn't come properly tightened down. Okay, now it's not loose anymore, but anyway, so, motherboard backplates, um, they help a little bit with VRM thermals, there's thermal pads under it over in, in the VRM area. Um, but the main benefit a motherboard backplate gives a motherboard is that, the, depending on how it's implemented, the motherboard ends up being a lot more rigid. Um, and that's good because you don't want your motherboard bending, right? Like, PCBs can tolerate some amount of flex, but there's there's upper limits to how much you can bend a PCB before it starts breaking. And especially in the chipset area, right? So down in this area, um, bending the PCB too much can actually break the chipset because you'll basically break the connections between the chipset and, and the motherboard and then the board stops working because the chipset isn't connected anymore. Um, and that's a relatively common, you know, failure f uh, mode for, for motherboards. But the thing is, this backplate here that MSI has is, uh, well, is not great. So for one thing, this upper portion just, like, it's not very rigid. Like, th this is really flexy. Like, th this is really bendy. It's not secured in, in enough locations, right? Like, I, a big part of this, I'd say, like, because basically you have one screw holding the backplate here. You have another one all the way over here, then one down here, one over here, and one over here. These these screws over here don't actually interact with the backplate at all. Those are just for the VRM. So the backplate on this board is actually pretty loose. Um, and in fact, the thermal pad that's over here you can't really tell, but it's like hovering above the, like, it's not actually pressed into the PCB very well, unless, unless I push it down like that. So, yeah, um, that's, um, uh, like, it still helps a little bit with the overall rigidity of the board, but, uh, honestly, I was, I was expecting better. Like, th this board still has quite a lot of flex to it compared to some of the other high-end boards that I've seen with backplates, where, like, the boards just don't bend, like, at all. Um, so, yeah, this backplate is just kind of... I'm Like, it still helps, and it also helps, you know, protect the SMDs from you, um, like, stabbing something into the motherboard. Like, if you have badly... If you have... If you installed too many standoffs in your case or something, the backplate will stop you from breaking the board with them. Um... But yeah, this is uh, this is not the best backplate implementation I've seen. So, not that I think it matters that much, but it's just like yeah, I would have I would have preferred a more you know structural backplate than we got here because here it's kind of like well, it's got a backplate, and in terms of function, I don't feel like it provides that much. Um, what else do we have? We've got voltage read points up over here. Um, and they are actually through holes into the PCB, so, you know, you're not going to have your probes sliding all over the, the PCB if you're trying to take a measurement. Like, like what you get when the motherboard just has, like, solder bumps. I really don't like solder bump measurement points. Um, so I really prefer the through hole ones like that. Then, uh, why are we on the back? Oh yeah, there's a hole for a K-type thermocouple in the CPU socket, so if you want to... Like, this is for extreme overclockers. Basically, if you want to monitor the uh, contact between the CPU and the LN2 pot, um, you can stick a thermocouple through there and take the um, temperature measurement from the back of the CPU because if you're, you know, properly monitoring that temperature measurement throughout your entire overclocking session, uh, you'll sort of see a consistent temperature delta between the back of the CPU and the, and the LN2 pot. And so... If the thermal paste fails or something, um, you'll see the delta between the LN2 pod and the back of the CPU suddenly jump up by several degrees, um, or, like, a lot of degrees, potentially. <laughs> like, it really depends on how much the thermal paste fails. 
Uh, you can sometimes have like partial failures and then you can have just like straight up CPU is, you know, going ambient and the LN2 pot is a minus, m minus, uh, minus 180 or something. And, and yet the CPU is going almost ambient. So for that kind of scenario, this is, this is super useful. Um, so that's neat that the board has that. And uh, what else do we have? Well, we have a six pin power connector down here for extra power to the PCIe slots. It's just a real shame that, uh, well, the, the thing is, is if you have two GPUs plugged in, you really shouldn't need this. And if you try to plug in a third GPU, you're not gonna be physically able to plug this in. <laughs> so, cause, uh, do I have a cable to demonstrate? Oh yeah, I do. Come here. Nope, that's the wrong cable. Okay, you know what? But you get the... Actually, there we go. Here's a six pin. Um, right? So you do that. And now you can't put a GPU into the third PCIe slot. Because, well, that's right there. So, like, I'm not... So this is pretty pointless. Especially because, like, two GPUs, even if they overdraw the PCIe slot a little bit, shouldn't overload your 24 pin power connector. So you shouldn't need that until you're at like three or four GPUs. And while the board physically doesn't support four GPUs, and if you try to plug in a third, you're not plugging that in anymore. So it's kind of like, why is this here? <laughs> but it doesn't harm anything by being on the board. So yeah, not really a huge deal, but I, I'm not really a fan of that. Got some right angle USB ports. Um, also, I guess I should have pointed out that the motherboard is EATX, but I think that's pretty obvious from the fact that it's very square instead of rectangular, like your regular, you know, ATX board. Um, so case compatibility is something to watch out for with a board like this, especially with the, the sideways USB ports, because they're going to stick out even further um, when you plug those in. But, well, they're along the SATA ports, so same kind of thing. Um... It's kind of it for the board, right? Like, got some I.O., we got a backplate, got the little controller thing. So, yeah, that's sort of the first look at the Z590 Godlike from MSI. I'm, I can't wait to actually, like, uh, test this board out because uh, well, I'm very excited about the VRM. I, I really want to take some measurements of that. And also, I want to mess around with the memory overclocking, but we're, we're going to talk about that in more detail later so yeah um oh i guess i should have mentioned there's like an oled screen that, un, under under this but you saw that when it turned when i turned it on and um uh, well i don't really care that much about the oled screen to be completely honest <laughs> so yeah um that's it for the overview um i'll probably not be doing videos like this for the other boards because honestly um yeah, like the main reason I wanted to do this is because I really do think that MSI's promotional po photos for this board look absolutely bloody horrendous, and the board looks way better in person. Um, and it, honestly, it even looks way better on camera, right? Like, again, that that's the promotional picture. This is what the board actually looks like. Or at least I hope this is what the board actually looks like, because again, this I believe this is technically an engineering sample board. Um, so... Um, yeah, and so I'm not sure how different it is from the final retail versions. It's not as engineering sample as some of the other boards I've gotten, where, like, you'd have debug he headers for, for uh, well, the debug headers that aren't present on the retail versions, and I've not noticed anything like that on this one so far. So this seems pretty final compared to some of the other boards I've had. So, yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both of those help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. Links in the description. Yeah, thanks for watching, and goodbye.